let's talk now about instantaneous selectivity. We've seen that selectivity in general is how well our uh, reactions perform, how are we producing our desired products versus our undesired product. So imag let's imagine we have A, and of course there's a constant right here, turns out to our desired product. But at the same time we have A may take this second path, which is the undesired product. We then must define the instantaneous selectivity, and I say instantaneous, maybe you're asking why, because it's talking about rates of reaction. At that moment, what's the, let's say, the derivative, to remember, a rate is how many moles of D are changing with respect of uh, volume and time. Since the volume is fixed, or per unit volume, so we don't care actually volume, we're talking about more about how many moles are we producing per unit time. But anyways, let's continue here. And, yeah, we're going to make a ratio between these two guys, the rate of formation of our desired product, how many moles per second we are producing of D, versus the moles of production of U, or U, how many are you producing? So if you are talking about, I'm producing 10 gram moles of D, but at the same time I'm producing 2 gram moles of the undesired product, you will be talking about that we have a selectivity or instantaneous selectivity of 5. Uh, just to remind you that this has units of moles of desired product, so actually it's not a dimension this, it's moles of desired product divided by moles of undesired product. Which if you know moles and moles will cancel, but in this case we're talking specifically about moles of desired product versus moles of undesired product. Now let's see this concept, overall selectivity, which I like it best. Uh, let's say we're going to use this more into designing and we're going to use this more into pricing. So we, it's the, this one is the actual uh, concept that we, you will be going and speaking with your boss and that, because it, that's the most like important one, the molar flow rate. We're going to speak about molar flow rates. So, this is the overall selectivity, as the name says, the overall at the ending or in general, or what happens at the, at the finished product, is this one. It's easier to measure, of course, measuring rates of reactions. You remember probably from last chapters, it's kind of difficult, but flow rates are very easy to, uh, to measure. Actually, you just need a flow meter and you have your flow, and that's everything. Of course, you will need concentration because that's not only about this will give you the general flow rate, but it's not that difficult. And what I want, well, for the first thing is you have this symbol here. And I bring it to you guys because we're going to talk about continuous flow and the batch. You know that the batch has no flow rate, so that's why we talk about moles, just moles. And here we talk about moles per second. So just to, was a reminder. As you can see, we're going to use the molar flow rate at the outlet. So you have your product here. You have one flow rate, let's say, flow rate of our desired product and flow rate of our own desired product. We're going to compare it. How many? Maybe you're having 10 grammoles per second. And you have 90 grammoles per second. So 100 divided by 90 will give you uh, something like 10 divided by 9. Okay. And that's more easy to present because you're talking about flow rates, not uh, reaction rates. And the same thing goes for batch, just eliminate the time or the times there. Both uh, has unit of desired product versus undesired product as here. But the only thing is the, that this is instantaneous at that moment. And the overall is, let's say, at the end of the process. So, the higher the selectivity, of course, you are having a better reaction for our product. So, you have a high selectivity, uh, either overall or instantaneous, you're going to have a high product concentration. And I have you here some examples. Uh, the standard nomenclature is desired product over undesired product. So, we have this. What does that mean? 10.5, if I tell you, I have a selectivity of 10.5, means that I am producing 10.5 moles of my desired product versus one mole of undesired product. 
Okay, now what will happen if I say I have one or selectivity equals one? I have this one gram mole of desired product versus one gram mole of undesired product. And you can also call this the non selectivity of the product you don't want. You just switch them, and it's the only case in which you're going to have the same because if you have, for example, desired versus undesired you have very low selectivity. This means you are producing actually 100 moles of the undesired product versus the desired product. So just be sure that when they give you the data or if you are using this, be sure to put the or write this desired versus undesired because then of course the data will change. If they give you the undesired versus the desired, which is not that common, but it might happen, just be sure that this is the inverse of the selectivity we are going to use. And I have an example here, it's actually pretty easy. It's example one from chapter six from Scotty Fogler's book. Comparing the overall and instantaneous selectivities, so this one here and the first one we saw, of a continuous tier tank reactor. So they ask us to do a relationship. So in a CSTR by definition, you have these two guys. Uh, now we have this, this is an example I'm using, A turns into D and A turns into U. Whatever you want, mm, you're going to choose the first one, let's choose the first one here, instantaneous selectivity, by definition it's rate of reaction of D versus rate of reaction of U. So yeah, we cannot do any more because we don't know the rate of reaction. This is the first equation we're going to compare. Now, for overall selectivity, by definition we know it, we talk about flow rate. So flow rate of D and flow rate of U will give me the overall selectivity. And don't forget this symbol here. But if you remember that the CSTR by definition, or the design equation will give you this, we can find the actual flow rates. So why not substitute this into this equation? And once you substitute, you get this, the R of the desired product and the R of the undesired product. And since, since we're using the same volume, we can cancel this and we will end up with this equation, which is exactly the same equation that here. Look, rate of reaction of desired product versus rate of reaction of the undesired product. And we have it here also. And you will see that this is a special case for selectivity in which the CSTR have both selectivity, uh, the, or both the overall and the instantaneous are the same. But this is only for CSTR. If you do it for PFR, PBR, patch, you will probably not end up with this beautiful definition. And yeah, essentially that's everything on selectivity. Hopefully you got it. It's not that complicated or that complex. So you are ready to go to reaction yield. What's up guys? It's me, Chemical Engineering Guy. So if you like the video, why not push the like button? It really helps me to know if you're liking the videos or if I should be changing something or if I should be adding something, taking out content, whatever. Also, sharing is caring. So if you got any kind of friends, teachers, colleagues or whatever kind of person that might be interested in this type of content, why not share it? Sharing helps our community to grow faster in members and in content. If you want to keep track of my activity, videos, uploads, experiments, playlists, whatever content I'm getting on YouTube, be sure to click the subscribe button. Subscribing to the channel is totally free, guys. My dream is to create an online academy of chemical engineering, where everyone can access it in the world. Imagine a place in which the student, the teacher, and the engineer get the best of each other. Thank you, thank you, thank you guys for the support and the love.